The deep sea is kind of like a whole new world. Buried thousands of meters underwater, we're talking about a world where sunlight doesn't reach and where people obviously don't reside. But do you know what does reside in the deep sea? The weirdest and most fascinating fish. We've heard of dolphins and salmon, but have you heard of, or seen, a frilled shark? Or the giant spider crab? The vampire squid? And how exactly do they survive in the deep sea? Let's find out. Firstly, let's explore the five layers of the ocean. The uppermost layer, or the layer we're most familiar with, is the epilagic layer. This is the zone where sunlight easily penetrates the water, hence why it's also called the sunlight zone. Due to the presence of sunlight, there is also heat, and pressure is also low, making it easy for us to explore or enjoy activities like fishing and swimming. Once we cross 200 meters or 650 feet underwater, we reach the mesopelagic layer, or the twilight zone. Not much sunlight can penetrate through here, so the water gets colder. Also, because we are going deeper into the ocean, pressure begins to increase, making exploration more difficult. Going another 800 meters, or almost 3,000 feet below, and we reach the bathypelagic layer, or the midnight zone. It's mostly dark. So heat is absent and the pressure is high, reaching up to 5.8 thousand pounds per square inch. And due to the low amount of sunlight, sea creatures who live here tend to be black or red. The abyssopelagic layer, or the abyss, is where we've really reached the deep sea. This area reaches between 13,000 and 19,000 feet, or just beyond 4,000 meters. Most of the ocean floors reach up to here, but in some cases where you have trenches, like the Marianas Trench, the depth can be lower. This is what we call the hadopelagic layer, or the trenches, which can reach anywhere between 19,000 and 36,000 feet, or 11,000 meters. Unless you are specifically equipped with the proper requirement, it's impossible to explore this area due to the low temperatures and high pressures. And due to the lack of sunlight, it is also impossible for plants to grow here. Despite that, a lot of sea creatures are able to survive as far as the hadopelagic layer. Firstly, how are deep sea creatures able to withstand the heavy pressure of the water? Well, we know after reaching a certain point below the water, without the special equipment of course, humans will suffocate. We have air in our ears, sinuses, lungs, and blood vessels. So when we go underwater, that air becomes compressed. Because sea creatures are filled with water instead of air, they're able to survive in the deep sea because there's simply no air to compress. How about light? If the sunlight cannot reach all the way down to the bottom of the ocean, how can sea creatures see if it's extremely dark? Well, there is still a source of light, and it's bioluminescence. Light emitted by a microbe or an animal without using heat. There are a handful of different functions bioluminescence can serve for deep sea creatures, such as headlighting, mating, luring, and signaling. And most of these lights are blue because it's the color that travels the fastest in water. As a result, most deep sea creatures can't see red, and even then, bioluminescence isn't very bright. There are some sea creatures that have large eyes so they can capture very little light that already exists. Meanwhile, other creatures are actually blind, so they have to depend on their other senses, like smell and touch, to get around and survive. If there's no sunlight, plants can't grow. Along with the use of bioluminescence for luring, deep sea creatures get most of their food from above. When detritus or the remains of things like microbes, plants, and other living things make their way down to the bottom of the ocean. It's not often that large food sources, such as a whale corpse, is present. But when they are, these deep sea creatures absolutely take the opportunity to feast on them. So, we're probably already familiar with things like swordfish, the jellyfish, and the lanternfish. But what other fascinating creatures live in the deep sea? Some can be scary or beautiful. So let's explore some of them. Let's start off with the Japanese spider crab. They're known for having the largest leg span for anthropods. Living in the waters of Japan, they can go as deep as a thousand feet and their bodies can measure up to 12 feet. They're rare and thus considered prized delicacies. However, people are not allowed to hunt for these spider crabs during the spring when they reproduce in shallower water. Next up, we have the frilled shark. They look terrifying thanks to their teeth 
and they certainly do look old, because their appearance bears similarities as other creatures that roamed the planet during the Jurassic period. Frilled sharks usually live at about 5,000 feet deep underwater, or within the midnight zone. They are absolutely rare, except the time this one was found off the coast of Portugal a year ago. If you think the frilled shark isn't scary, then what about the fang-toothed fish? These hideous looking guys live up to their name due to their teeth being the largest of all fish when considering the size of their teeth in proportion with the body. Thankfully, they're pretty small and can't harm people. They can be found anywhere between 6,500 feet and 16,500 feet, or the abyssal pelagic zone. Not all deep sea creatures are completely terrifying though. Ones that can put on a light show can be absolutely mesmerizing. That's right, we're talking about fish that are bioluminescent, like the vampire squid. What a name for a squid that roams in the darkness of the ocean. They can live as deep as 3,000 feet underwater. They are known to have large eyes, or proportionately the largest eyes of any animal on Earth, and are covered with organs called photophores. Vampire squids use them to lure prey towards them, as well as evading predators. And the Pacific viperfish are bioluminescent too. They have photophores along their bodies to lure their prey towards them. They're pretty small, as they can only grow up to an average of 30 centimeters, but can live as deep as 13,000 feet underwater, near the abyss. Do you know of any other interesting deep sea fish that we haven't talked about yet? Do you have any other interesting facts about the deep ocean or have any other comments? Join the conversation and tell us about it below. And if you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Feed My Curiosity.